Thank you for tuning in to Radicars TV on Radicars.com. I'm your host, Patrick Greeno, and today we're going to be talking about day three of the 2018 National Sports Collectors Convention. Uh, I'm consistently amazed every year about by the things that I see um, and and find at the National. I mean, it's just it's such an amazing uh, show. And I think that if you haven't gone yet, you should really, uh, I'm going to turn up and adjust this, you should really make it a point to, to go one year. It's an incredible uh, event, just an incredible place. Um, so as soon as I go there this morning, so I get to get in at 10, um, I go straight back to the booth from which I bought a large stack of items the, the, the day previously. And um, I had noticed the night before that I had added four cards that I didn't really intend to buy. So I took them back and I was like, hey man, I accidentally added these. They were Bo Jackson rookies. I didn't really, I didn't want to buy them. Um, so they just ended up in my stack because I probably just threw them in on accident when I was throwing in everything else in my stack. So he's like, yeah, no problem. So just pick out whatever and then we'll, I'll make sure to tally these off. He's like, okay. So um, I sat there for about 20, 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes and pulled out a stack. It's like probably like that. And he shaved off a couple bucks, and we negotiated for a price, and it made sense to both of us. And then I was on my way. And throughout the day, you know, I was um, I was cherry picking bargain bins and looking at showcases and just having a good time. And the day previous, uh, my my over the shoulder bag broke. The strap just blew out because of the weight. Um, as a VIP member this year, eBay gave all VIP mat members uh, over-the-shoulder bags, so I had a really nice uh, backup and alternative bag. So that's what I used today. It was great. And as my <laughs> my bag became heavier and heavier throughout the night, my shoulder became to fatigue. It started to fatigue, and so it's real sore right now, even now. And I haven't been having my bag over my shoulder in a while. Um, but uh, really enjoyed having this bag available and I'm gonna use it tomorrow and the next day or for day four and five. And so um, I've had a really good time uh, for doing, you know, going through the bargain bins and things. And, uh, you know, as I was kind of looking at people's showcases, what I would do is kind of look in the showcase and see their pricing. And if they have something that's priced above market or way above market, I will then you know, probably not bother with their bargain bins because if they're, if say something's $12, then I could find it for like two in another place or one even. Um, in those instances, I don't bother looking at their bargain bins because I immediately assume that that same pricing strategy is going to be applied to the bargain bin. I might look and like peruse for like half a minute, but if I don't see any signs of life, I'm on my way. Because I'm not going to try to negotiate that far out. I don't want to insult them and I don't want to spend my time doing something that I don't think is going to be fruitful for either one of us. It's just, I'm trying to save time, man. I'm a limited time schedule here. Um, so I, 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 that's just like one of those like, um, how do I manage my resource, my one resource I can't get back, which is time. How do I do best do that? Because I can't see it all. As I serpentine, I just kind of look and see if anything catches my eye. Now, as I got up to the top of 1700, I saw a booth that had some, I had a, had a 1964 Toss Venezuelan um, Lou Pinella rookie. And I was, it was PSA 1, I think. I went 70, 75. And as I was walking down 1700, okay, because I went up 1600 and then I wrapped around and walked down to 1700, I started thinking about this card. I was like, well, maybe I want to grab that, you know, like maybe that's something I want to have in my collection. So as I looped back to 18 and walked all the way up 18, got back to the, to the top 18, I could loop back down to 17 again, I started looking for the card. And I couldn't find it. And I was like, what did I do? It materialized this memory that I saw this card? Uh, well, yeah, I ended up eventually finding it. And I, it was kind of like tucked away in this little nook area of this, this display showcase. And so um, I asked the guy to pull it out for me. And as he did, he lifted it up and there was another Venezuelan underneath it. And I was like, Great, can I see the whole stack? And he pulls the stack out, and I look at the, the he has the, Ven, uh, the Venezuelan of uh, 64 Tops, Tony La Russa rookie. He has also the Venezuelan for the uh, 64 Tops, um, Lou Pinella rookie, and the 64 Venezuelan Tops, Tommy John rookie. And of all the three, I was blown away by the he had a three. But of the three, the Tommy John really stood out. The centering is gorgeous. It's PSA 2, 
It's just a beautiful looking card. Centering on the front and back is it's the best, one of the best Venice Williams I've ever seen. Maybe I ever will see. Who knows? A great card. Yeah, he wanted a hundred. I said, look, I have a price in mind. I'm going to give to you. I'm a number I'm thinking of. Um, I'm going to mention it. Whatever your response is, I'll respect it. And I was like, you know, how does 50 sound? Is that fair? He's like, I could do 60. I was like, okay, I could do that too. So we closed the deal, bought the card, and I'm completely pleased with it, which you'll see in the video here in a minute. Um, as I so I grabbed, I grabbed that and I was real happy. It's just a better card. The other two cards were nice, but the Pinella and the Larusa both were really off center to the one side, and the backs were um, significantly compromised through from some kind of staining or I don't think it was mold, but it was real bad spotting on the back, real real bad. Um, the Tommy John doesn't have any of that. This is a real clean card. So. I continued, you know, going through the aisles and picking up, you know, cherry picking stuff in bargain bins and whatever and having a good time and saying no to stuff if it didn't meet my price parameters. Um, and I found this lady, uh, this this table this lady was managing, as I guess it's her husband's, it was all graded cards and they were all 25% off. And I only looked through the 70s stuff because in the 80s it was like PSA 9s and in the 80s I want 10s of stuff, maybe, you know, in 90s too. So I just stuck with the 70s. You she didn't have much, but she did have a 1975 Topps Doug Desenzis rookie card and in a PSA 9 and I was like which is 15 bucks 25 percent off I asked her if she'd do 10 bucks uh, she's like yeah that's fine so I gave her 10 for that uh, PSA 9 really clean centering I was really happy top to bottom left to right just a great looking card eye appeal is really important to me on a card and it doesn't have to be a mega star it can be like a guy I'm aware of rookie cards kind of significant Doug DeSensis sort of falls in this Interesting fact about Doug DeSensis is that he played third base. Cal Ripken came up in 82, also played third base in the beginning before he got moved over to shortstop. He took Doug DeSensis' place. It's my understanding is that's what happened. Doug DeSensis got traded for Cal Ripken. Um, the, the Doug DeSensis that I got today was really, really nice. What I like about the show is when you find graded stuff, you can actually enjoy the appearance in hand before you buy it. Online, you kind of get that in a way because you have to see the scan of it. Um, sometimes they'll share pictures of the backs too, and if the back is important to you, you get to see it that way too. But in, in person, you really get to inspect the card. And so I was really pleased with the, the ability to be able to do that. Um, so I, 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 I bought that card, and then I kept, I kept kind of going through aisles, and actually this other card I think I bought earlier on in the day by this time. Found a guy with a showcase that had some interesting stuff in it, and in it there was a sample card, a card that was labeled a sample in a PSA case, and it was an 89 Topps Dale Murphy. And I was like, why? What's the deal? Can I see that card? He's like, yeah, no problem. Pulls it out for me, I look at it. And I was looking to inspect the 89 Topps card, and I was like, this doesn't look like anything different than the normal 89 Topps Dale Murphy. So I was like, what's the deal? He's like, well, it's a, it's a prototype of like, the slab. I was like, what do you mean the slab is a prototype? He's like, this is the slab that was created to like prototype the slabs that PSA would make. And I was like, wait, is this, are you saying this is the first ever slab that PSA created? He's like, yeah, it's my understanding. I was like, how did you get this? He's like, I got it in a collection. I was like, dude, what do you want for it? So he, get, he gave me a quote and I was like, would you entertain a count? He's like, no, I need to be firm on that quote. I was like, okay. So I just paid. And I was, you know, on my way, I was real happy. So essentially what I have, at least to my knowledge, and I can't back this up with any degree of certainty, and I'm, I would love to learn more, but this card, which you'll see in this next portion of this video, is, uh, it has all the qualifiers to make it seem like it would be the first ever slab created by PSA as a prototype to, you know, have, basically be, be approved to be produced in mass. All businesses, when they, uh, big business anyway, big ideas, especially manufacturing and, and, and retail and commodities, things like that, um, uh, you know, the bigger industries. Generally speaking, most of these categories will create some sort of a prototype, whether for like a packaging or something, so that the committee can see and final approval and make sure it meets up with uh, spec specs and, and it's, you know, in regulation, whatever. Um, and so in this capacity, this would have been that prototype. So I was real happy to find the potential of what this could be, like this amazing piece. So um, 
those three cards and a couple, I, f I found some pretty interesting 90s inserts today, luckily, and some really cool vintage. So let's have a look at what I, what I, what I acquired today. So what we're going to do is just kind of gonna go through the stuff I got today. Now the binder's gotten really full, as you can see, it's like, like an angle now. So we're just going to kind of skip the classics and go right into some of the inserts and some of the vintage and talk straight, straight about that stuff. Um, so let's get right into it here. I'm going to kind of skip in and go right into that. There's a lot of this stuff here. All right, so we'll start with this page. This is a good page. So really, um, some of the inserts that I got were like a bomb squad from uh, Triple Play. I always like the Sapia on that with the uh, the brown frame. This is just a really nice card. Um, Minor League Matt Williams and Larry Walkers. Now I think I might have have I might already have one or both of these, but I did, couldn't remember, so I just figured and grab them for the price. They're pretty inexpensive. Another uh, Toast of the Town uh, collector's choice. This is the Tony Gwynn. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the Manny Ramirez. And uh, so I grabbed that. It's a nice one. Minor League uh, David Ortiz. Now I was kind of on the fence about this because I'm pretty sure that this card was printed in some kind of a volume that is available, but it was inexpensive, so I grabbed that. This card is actually really hammered. This is a version of the 91 uh, Best, Classic Best, uh, Chipper Jones. This is some kind of like limited edition Stars of the Fisher future. I don't really know much about the card. I hadn't seen it before. It's it's a really bad shape. It's got like divots and dings and things on it, but the only one I'd seen ever. So grab that. Well, the Thomas card I didn't have. This is another Tops Fire release. This is the green or emerald to 199. And then a Moments and Milestones from 2007. I was happy to grab that one. Didn't have that guy. All right, so this here is uh, Diamond Cuts from 97 Flyer Showcase. Very underrated set. It's very inexpensive, which is nice. Uh, it's probably the most inexpensive set from the 97 block of this Flyer Showcase stuff, but I really like the presentation. This is Matt Williams. Another 94 Stadium Club first day issue. Really dig those. And then a Flair, uh, 96 Flair. Diamond Cuts, Mike Piazza. There was an Albert Bell at the show today, but I think I already have Albert Bell for this set. So when I saw the Piazza, I was like, eh, I'll grab that. Didn't get the Bell, didn't need him. Uh, this is uh, 2004 Don Sleet Status. This is the extradition for Mike Messina, number 235. Uh, this is 96 uh, Leaf Signatures Platinum Press Proof, Jim Tomei. I really like those. Ah, yes, Philip Humber. Uh, I believe this is uh, 2005 Leaf Certified Materials. This is the gold version, number to 25. So I have the black one, number to 1. And I saw this, I was like, well, that's a nice little ad. You know, it, it looked nice next to the black one. This card was probably really hot for a half a minute back in 2012. Maybe a full minute. Um, and then it, it just went out because he had a, I think it was like a no-hitter or a shutout or something perfect game or something like that and then his stuff just went through the through the roof and then it came down to reality very shortly thereafter another 95 Bowman's best refractor this is a Len Dykstra another 96 finest refractor Eddie Murray and another 96 collector's choice gold signature so found two more uh, 96 Bowman's best atomic refractors man these things are so nice I really love the presentation here Look how beautiful they are oh, two commons Trey Beeman and Rafael Medina. I don't really know anything about those players, but I grab those and I find them. A uh, couple of 90, I think it's, no, it's a 98, 97. I always get those mixed up. That is 98. I thought it was 98. Donruss Gold Press Proofs. I've got a Ray Langford here and a Paul Canerco. Uh, 97 score Arts Proof Showcase Series thing. I really dig those cards. They're so rad. I passed on another card in the set for three bucks. I just didn't think it was worth three. Uh, but a buck, I'll grab it. It's cool. Uh, it's 2000 Paramount. This is a hollow gold number to 199. This is a Chuck Finley. He's a classic Angels pitchers, pitcher in his early, early 90s. A lot, late 80s, actually. Came up with them. Uh, this is cool. This actually hails from the uh, Flare run as well this is the hot gloves but this one's missing the actual foil printing showcasing his name so this is an error card it's supposed to go down here by his legs 
So when I saw that, I was like, well, that's a variation. I'll grab that. Uh, this is the refractor version of the Topps Chrome. I think that's 90, what is that? Yeah, 99. So these are cool. This one is uh, with uh, Jeff Bagwell, Gonder Scalaraga, and Mark McGuire. It has a dollar. It's like, yeah, those are hard to find in refractors. So I figured I'll just grab that one. And then 97 Bones Best, Best Cuts, Bob Abreu, Atomic Refractor. Most of the stuff was a dollar or less. If I bought in bulk, I was able to get some prices down below the uh, asking. So, and when I, you know, I'll go through a bin and then find like a block of cards, I'm like, oh, those are cool, grab them. Let's make a little stack, a little short stack, go up and then we'll negotiate. Another 94 Fleer, Smoking Heat Ryan. Really love that card. It's, like I said, it's, and it's underrated. I just dig the design. It's very, very a staple of 94. I'm a big fan, though. Yes, 98 Squad is proof. I uh, really dig those. Those are cool. So this is a um, Garrett Anderson. I'm not sure who the kid is next to him, though. The little boy? He's too young to be, like, an employee, like a bat boy or something. Who knows, but... Yeah, I guess it looks like they're doing the national anthem thing because the kid's got this hand over his heart. It looks like uh, Garrett Anderson has, ha has his hat off standing in a similar fashion. So this one over here, this is from 96 Ultra Prime Leather. This is the actual pack issued version. There are a couple of other versions of this card commemorating his, um, his significance. Uh, there's like one with a... Uh, a pocket of sand from one of the games he was he, att he had attended. I think it, it was the game in which he had broke the record, but I don't. I'd have to go back and do that research. Whatever the case, there are three versions of this card, and this was the last one to complete my Triforce. So I might I might you know bring them together for an article or something in the future. Who knows? But I wanted to get this last version of the card. Kind of nice. This is 97 Fleer um, Soaring Stars. Glowing. Now the difference between the glowing and the base is that there are no stars on the glowing, and you've got this like, like cloud pattern happening in the background. I mean, these cards are really, really sweet. They are sweet. Um, big fan of these. This is the only one I saw today. They're very easy to misidentify. She got a blog post on these in Radicards.com if you want to see them side by side. The Thomas is the example. Uh, so go check that out for sure. And Fuego, uh, Movan. Big fan of that set. Love this stuff. The Pinnacles classic Dufex that everybody loves. So cool. We'll talk about this card in a minute. This is uh, Roger Clemens. This is a 97 Leaf uh, Fractal Matrix die cuts. Right. It's Kevin Apier. I don't think I have him. I'm sort of casually piecing the set together. Just taking a little bit of time. So when I find these commons, I grab them. Uh, this is, what is that, 2000 Metal Hit Machines, it's Tony Gwynn, dig this set. I don't think I have the Gwynn in this run, but I've got like the Jeter and, and like Sosa and some of the other guys. So I wanted to add, I saw this and I was like, oh, I can add Gwynn now, so that's cool. Big fan of this 96 Fleer Zone set, I think they're just really cool cards. I think Fleer did a great job with a lot of their inserts, this is one of them. They're just beautiful. This is uh, Albert Bell. Love that. All right, so this card's cool. This shouldn't have been released. It was never really released officially. This is the uh, Predictors from 97, right? Yeah. It took a minute to identify that, but whatever the case is, the Predictors run, uh, when you pull them out of packs, they have the little scratch-offs. There's like four scratch-offs and then a, a, a pose of the player. And my thumb's coming in handy over here, I guess. Um, but then these ones, the redeemed ones, with this, like, see-through thing happening on the card. You can kind of see through the card itself. I don't know if you can do that. You can, oh, I can kind of see my finger there. Um, it's a portrait of the player right there. And they were never officially released, at least to my knowledge. Um, in a, in, I, I guess, I don't know how the actual the background of this existed, like why they were, weren't released. I can't remember the specific back end. All I know is that uh, these are exceedingly rare. So I found a Clemens, and I was like, yeah, I'll grab a Clemens. So there's that. All right. So uh, the tops rediscover Sandy Alomar rookie. I don't really. I don't, this is my this is my first one. Well, there are two here in this page. We'll talk about the other one in a minute. So I got the Sandy Alomar. 
And then over here is the same thing we discovered for Corey Snyder. This card was a big card for a minute back in the 80s. I have a couple of these. The base, Tiffany, I think I got some signed copies. So this is kind of an addition to that. <laughs> kind of cool. Uh, this is a 95 SP Championship Fall Classic Die Cut Bonds. And this is the 89 score George Brett with the error back that says he's got, he had made, what's the thing? It's, uh, I think that the, uh, the error is in the subtext below the career stats. I think that's right. Um, anyway, I grabbed that. That was in a really inexpensive bin. I was glad to get that. So most of that stuff was like 50 cents to a dollar a piece. And I bulk, bulk a lot of, a lot of it. These t this card here and this card were given to me by a gentleman who recognized me. And he, he came up and introduced himself and, you know, said he liked my content. I was really very, um, thank, I, was, I was humbled by it. I appreciated that compliment. I was flattered by it. And so he gave me these two, uh, classic 92 Fleer Rookie Sensations, Frank Thomas, and 96 Medalist Stadium Club. He's doing a dollar boot this year, a really nice guy, and he gave me these two cards. So if you're watching, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Another gentleman that uh, approached me and said he liked my content got me this. He, 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 he appreciates the, the blog posts and everything else, and I, I was really appreciative of him to uh, give me this card. I, didn't, didn't, I hadn't had it previously, so I was glad to, glad to add it. So if you're watching, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And it's nice, nice that you did that for me. You didn't have to, but you did. So thank you. Uh, let's get right into vintage here. Uh, we'll kind of just like dive into these pages. There's sort of, it's like a mix of all the different days so far. So we might do some repetition, but whatever the case, no problem. We got a, um, I think we already discussed a lot of these guys from the other day. So we'll kind of move on to the next page. Let me see if I can find a page we had discussed before. Oh, right. I got my first Ozzy Smith rookie. Uh, at, of this national today. I usually pick up a few of these, but they're this national, they're a little bit more expensive than last, and so um, this is my first one this time. Um, and my first two 83 Topps wins this national, too. Again, cards I just haven't seen frequently this time. I have two of them. They're not in the best, big, best of shape. I'd say these are like twos and threes. And they're just, they're not great, but whatever. I mean, they're classics. Some of my favorite cards of all time. Uh, um, Trammell Molitor rookie, also not in, not in the greatest of shape, but I'll take it. Oh, what else here? Oh, now we're getting into it here. So I got, uh, again, my first Eddie Murray rookie of this show, too. He was five this time. And again, they're, they're expensive this time around for some reason. So, you know, kind of have, have to kind of be a little bare this year on these. Another Lyle. I love this Spark and Lyle card. It's such, such a funny card. Uh, so I grabbed my first one of those this show, too. Uh, another Griffey Senior rookie. I got a 60 tops uh, Brooks, uh, Frank Robinson. Sorry. I always like this card. It's like the 60 tops is like a sideways thing. Um, not in the greatest of shape, but I'll take it. Another 73 tops Clemente. Um, a slightly less conditioned but Buckner rookie card. Uh, a 65 Frank Robinson, a 70 Bart Star with some tape residue on the bottom. But Star's a, he's a star. Another Yanni rookie. Big fan of Dennis, Dennis Eckersley. He's a, he was a great pitcher. He's a sidewinder. He would like pitch this side. This one's got some like surface issues, but. Whatever, dude. This is a great card to have. That's next. 72 high numbers. Uh, Hoyt Wilhelm. That's really high number, too. That's like in the high 700s. Yes, yeah, 777. Um, my first 71 tops Ryan. And I think that's my first 71 tops Aaron. Now, the Aaron is in really bad shape. The Ryan's not great either, but Aaron's got some really bad surface issues rubbing. Uh, mint conditions, 75 tops Ryan. This thing is like the worst condition ever. Another 64, a second year Staub. This all-star rookie card. Really dig that. Another favorite, uh, 59 tops Orlando Cepeda. Second year. He's a, he's a rookie in 58. 
another Blylevin rookie. I got my first Moon rookie today of the show. I have a couple of these at the house, but this one's in really bad shape, but it was a throw-in. Uh, another Topps Ripken, big fan, also in low grade. So the thing is, this guy had this gigantic, this awesome table. I'm probably going to go back tomorrow, the first thing, dig through some more. He's got just cool stuff. And a lot of it's low grade. These like vintage cards are like pretty low grade. But So I just pulled out the stuff I liked. And, uh, just, you know, we, we, we worked a deal right before the end of the day today. And that was the last booth I saw before I called it, not called it a day. Um, but I was real pleased with the, the result. I think we've discussed these. This page has been discussed already. Where are we? This page has been discussed. Oh, yeah. Three more of these uh, 78 Ryans. I really dig this card. This kind of just reminds me of when I was 12. <laughs> this middle card has the pack crimping um, uh, dots, the perforation on the long the top. At least I think that's what that is. I can't think of anything else that would be. It looks like, too, it could pass as someone threading through the card, but I don't think this situation likelihood that that has ever happened. I think like, like those are pack crimping holes. Like this card got stuck in the crimp area. Kind of cool. Picked up another Gaylord Perry rookie. Can't go wrong with that card. And a Stargill from 66. I just was feeling it. I don't know why. I just dig the card. It's not a rookie. I just like the 60s stuff. Big fan. Stargill. Can't go wrong. It's awesome. And as you remember, there was a 72 Tops Maze hanging out here by himself. And before Jason was in slasher movies, he was actually on the ice as Tony Esposito. So Jason Voorhees' pre-horror movie career was he was a professional hockey player. And I have proof. This is the proof. So I got this card because it's amazing. Because of that outfit, it's incredible. And Tony Esposito is a, he's a great goalie. I don't know a lot about hockey. Uh... So I, I learn as I kind of go through cards, and I, I've, I'm familiar with this name among various other of the superstars, but this card reminded me of the Jason movies from the, the 80s and 90s, and so I had to get it, because it's very much reminiscent of that sort of thing. And so, I mean, look at that. Look at that helmet. It's like face helmet thing. It's really cool. So there's my vintage... Uh, my, my pickups for the day for the, the bulk of it now what we're going to do now is talk about some really cool stuff okay so let's go right into it here now i want to do a close-up of the cat i got yesterday so here it is i mean look at that centering i got fisheye lens on here right now so this is why you get a little bend action but at least you can get an idea of the centering on this card i mean it is just i don't think i'm gonna be able to top this i mean this is Really fascinating stuff. And Jim Cat's not even a Hall of Famer, but he's a 16-time Gold Glove and multi-time All-Star. So this is a guy who has a chance of getting the Hall under the Veterans Committee at some point. I don't know when that will happen, but I feel like he's he's in a good spot to be able to be considered for that because of his credentials. So and again the back. Look at that. That's like so clean. Oh, I just love it. It's so nice. Just so cool. 60 tops. Jim Cat rookie card. And a PSA 8. Again, the eye appeal in the centering is what caught me. I was like, dude, I gotta get this card. This card's incredible. And there's the picture of him. Ha! Huh. Love that. Okay, so today, this lady had this like whole spread of graded cards, and they were all, I think, like 25% off. So I went through like the 70s stuff because I just. I don't want to deal forward on that. Because once I go forward, I want, like, gem stuff. And they didn't have much of that in the 80s, so I just passed on everything forward. So I grabbed this. This is a PSA 9, Doug DeCenzis, rookie. 75 tops. But look at the centering on this one. Man, it's so clean. That's, that's, that's like near perfection centering. Left and right, top to bottom. I've seen nines of this card in the past, but centering has always been kind of kind of crappy. So when I saw this, I was like, great. Something you might not know about Doug DeSenz is he, he preceded Cal Ripken in his position. Cal Ripken came up as third base. And Doug DeSenz was, I think, traded for Cal Ripken. Or that Baltimore Orioles. 
So I grabbed this for $10. Thought that was a deal. I mean, 75 tops and nines for ten, for that low is, you know, it's a great price. Back's pretty nice too. Good eye appeal, great centering. And the backs on some of these 75s, they can be off center as well. So I was glad to get this. This is a really cool card. Not a super duper star, but definitely a notable rookie card in the set. So this will make a nice addition to my graded archive. Just pretty modest actually. So I'm walking up one aisle and uh, I, I see this card that I, 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 you know, I'm thinking about and I, I kind of keep going and, I, and I, I just keep thinking about it. I'm like, well, I should probably go back and check it out, right? It's essentially a 64 uh, Venezuelan Lou Pinella rookie card in a PSA, I think it was like a one. That one, I think 75. And so I kept walking. I was like, I kind of want to get that Pinella. That's a nice card. It's, it's really off center, but it'd be really great to have that card. So I'm serpentining an aisle, I come back up and around. I look for that card again, and I can't find it. So I start asking people. I was like, hey, do you have, the, do you have any 64 Venezuelans? And people are like, no, I don't. I'm like, okay. So I keep walking. I finally find the card. It's sort of like tucked away on the edge of the, one of the showcases. So I asked the guy to pull the, pull the card out for me, and, and then underneath it, there's another Venezuelan of another card. I was like, can I just see that whole stack? And he's like, yeah. So he had the, uh, under, and on that stack was obviously the Lou Pinella. Then he had the Tony La Russa. And then he had Tommy John. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are amazing. So I loved the La Russa and I loved the Pinella, but the Tommy John, check this out. Look at this card. He and I closed the deal on it. Look at the centering on this card. This is the best I've ever seen any Venezuelan. Right, it's perfect. It's a two. No, I didn't pay a hundred. We negotiated. I actually was like, "Hey, I'm gonna throw a number at you. I'll respect whatever response you give me." I was like, "How? How does 50 sound?" He's like, "I could do 60." I was like, "So can I." So we closed this at 60. I thought that was a great deal. This is Tommy John rookie card and a Venezuelan. I just, just incredible, man. I just really dig this. This is my first Venezuelan. It's PSA 2. Check out that centering, though. I mean, it's just like, they're always so off-centered. This is, like, so nice. And you flip it over. Look at the centering on the back, even. I mean, it's clean, too. It's not, like, destroyed with all kinds of stains and whatever. This is just a really clean card. But if you look at it up in person, you can see why it got a 2. I just think that this is just such a cool, cool card. I love that it's Tommy John, too. Big fan of this card as a Topps release. But that it's a Venezuelan is just <laughs> a cherry on the, it's the icing on the, on the top, man. This is so, so cool. So cool. So it's the Bob Chance rookie. <laughs> With Tommy John. I love this. I think this is maybe the coolest purchase I've made um, that was kind of planned. Because it was only I say that because I, I, I went back for the other Venezuelan and I found this underneath it. So uh, really happy that I went back for that and found this card. What a great card to have, gosh. It looks better than a two. I, the way I'm looking at it now, like I, it looks it's cleaner to me. But it really, I mean, I trust PSA's grade. So, and I'm not going to regret it. I'm happy with this. This is such a cool card. So there you have it. This is 1964 Venezuelan Tops. Tommy John rookie card and a PSA 2. Beautiful front, great centering, gorgeous back, also pretty, you know, it's clean centering there too. Maybe a touch to the right, but I don't care. I love this card. So cool. So I'm going through the showcase today and I find this, you know, other booth and, and they're kind of going through. I kind of like look at everything on the showcases and I kind of peruse. And I found this other card, it's a PSA card, it said sample. And I was like, okay, well, I, I was like, can I see that card, sir? He's like, yeah, he pulls it out. You know, it's a Dale Murphy 89 Tops, and it's a sample. And I'm like, I look at the card. I was like, how is this card a sample? It looks just like any other 89 Tops Dale Murphy card. And he's like, no, no, this is, this is something more interesting. So let's talk about this card. Before we talk about this card, think about business, okay? And when businesses have an idea for something, they might produce a prototype. Usually any high dollar, high investment business will, will produce a prototype, okay? 
and then they'll run it through investors or they'll run it through you know committees and say like this is kind of how we're thinking the product will look and then it's approved and then it goes into mass production so PSA did that all right so this is PSA's very, at least to my understanding, like don't quote me on this because I don't have anything way to back this up, but this is, to my understanding, what this is. PSA slabbed a card, okay? This being a low-grade uh, off-center Dale Murphy. And in the flip, they said, okay, the, the, we'll put the brand at the top, the player below it, and underneath it will be, you know, whatever the title of the card would be. Over here, we'll put the card number, and underneath it, we'll put the grade, and underneath that, we'll put the serial number. So this is the sample. If this is the case, if, this, if all this, this makes sense, if this is true, this is the very first slab ever made by PSA before the Honus Wagner, before the company became, went into mass production. This would have been the very first piece of slab anything from PSA because this would have been the prototype slab, the Dale Murphy. They picked Dale Murphy probably because he was popular back in the 80s and they just wanted something just to grab that wasn't worth anything really. So they grabbed this just to slab it, just to show this is what the slab's gonna look like, this is what the card's gonna look like in the slab. This is the flip, this is what the flip's gonna look like. These are where the pieces of information are gonna go, you know, location-wise. This is the barcode, right? And the back of the card looks just like any other, the back of the flip just looks like any other early stage, early year PSA uh, flip. And it's just a standard generic 89 tops Murphy. It doesn't really care what's in here. It's just that this is the early print designed a font. And so, again, I can't back any of this up with certainty. But all of this kind of helps me formulate an idea of what this could possibly be. Okay, so I'm going to do some more research on this to see, maybe I can firm it up, but I was really pleased to grab this. I was like, oh, i got to have this if this is what this is. The first prototype of PSA, anything in a slab. So, there you have it. I found this today. It's very interesting. If this is true, this is a very, very significant piece of hobby history. And uh, hopefully some of the guys at PSA can help me further identify the origin of this particular release. But if this is the, if this is the first slab... I own the very first slabbed anything that PSA ever, ever produced. This is before the Honus Wagner, which was the first thing slabbed by PSA. So, there you have it. The first, or at least <laughs> to my understanding and my assumption, this being possibly the very first thing PSA ever slabbed. So there you have it pickups for today hope you enjoyed that so I really had a good time at the show today and and as I was shopping uh, a couple of fellows yeah, approached me and, and said they recognized me from Rata cards and they really appreciate my content and some of them gave me some cards for free and I was thankful humbled and uh, uh, grateful for that and as flattered that they were you know it's nice to know people are listening and watching and reading and I'm really um, thankful when they come up to me and, and it's just a cool experience to meet the people that are behind the, the computer screen that are also you know absorbing the content so those of you that came up to me and said hi thank you so so much and so uh, it's awesome to meet you um, and those of you that gave me stuff for free you know you didn't have to but I'm always thankful of it and thank you so much it's so cool that you were able to think of me in that way um, really appreciate it guys thanks so much um, Really had a good time going through the show today and finding stuff. A lot of the stuff I bought today was low end, but uh, you know, those three graded pieces I feel like are high end. Even the Doug Dezenzas is like kind of a nicer piece to me, even though it was so cheap, it's $10. Uh, I had a really good time digging through the boxes and finding cool stuff. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, definitely go to radicards.com and look for the article that covers you know, descriptions and breakdowns, and there's galleries of tons of photos. I take tons of photos at these, at these, uh, uh, on these days, and I dump them into galleries per day, uh, so you can see all the cool stuff I've photoed. Really interesting, like super rare stuff you'd never see. Like one of them was a '99 EX Century Essential Credentials. I think one of the versions that numbered to nine, still number to nine, is a Derek Jeter. I took a picture of that because I'm not going to buy it. It's just something I can be in awe of and appreciate and chronicle it on, on the blog. So uh, when you get a chance, 
definitely go check out radicars.com and look for that article. Or those articles, anyway, the block of them. Thanks for tuning in to Radicars TV on radicars.com. I'm your host, Patrick Greeno. And until next time, enjoy collecting. If you like this content, please subscribe. Thank you. Enjoy collecting.